As I started writing an intro for this video, I realized that I've been using Premiere Pro for 10 years, ever since my humble beginnings in video production using Premiere Pro CS4, Adobe has been a really big part of my life. And in this time, I've developed a really specific way of working in Premiere, and there are a lot of functions and shortcuts that I use every single day without even thinking about it now that save me so much time. So we're gonna jump straight into Premiere and I'll show you 16 keyboard shortcuts that are going to change your life. And if you stick around until the end, I'll share my secret video editing hack that I literally could not live without. Number one, timeline navigation. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to really quickly navigate through your project. The left and right arrow keys will move your playhead one frame at a time, and the up and down arrow keys will snap to every cut point that you have in your project. It's important to note that this only works for layers that you have selected. So right now I've got video layers one, two, and three selected, but if I was to turn video one off, it's only gonna snap to the clips that are on video layers two and three. Number two, the shuttle tools. Another cool set of navigation tools are the keys J, K, and L, also known as the shuttle tools. If you hit J, your playhead will start running the video backwards. If you hit J again, it will go back at double the speed and again and again. You can use K as shuttle stop, which will pause the video. This doesn't work like spacebar, which is like a play and pause function. K is just for hitting stop. L, which is probably the one that I would use the most, will play your video forwards, then it'll play at double speed and triple speed and so on. This can be useful if you're wanting to really quickly cut through a piece to camera or if you're proof watching your video and you don't need to watch the entire thing in real time again. Number three, going full screen. Say you're at the end of your project and you want to watch the whole thing full screen, select the program monitor and hit the tilde key. This will make any window that you have selected go full screen. So I can also use it for the timeline tool. I don't know when I would. I can do it for the source window. Don't know when I would, but I know that I can. Number four, duplicating clips. Instead of having to copy and then move the playhead and hit paste, a much easier way of doing that is to hold down the option or alt key, click and drag your clip to duplicate it. And you can do this as many times as you like. You can also do it with multiple clips by holding option and clicking and dragging. Number five, track select. If you wanted to create some space in the middle of your timeline, instead of having to click and drag everything and then move it across, a really great tool is the A key on your keyboard, which is track select forward and back. This will select all of the clips that are beyond where you are clicking. Then you can hit V, return to your selection tool and move the clips wherever you want them to go. If you hit A and then hold down shift as you click, it'll only select the clips in the layer you click into. If you hold shift and then press A, it'll change the tool to the track select backwards option. And again, if you hold shift as you click, it'll only select the backwards layers on the layer you have clicked on. Number six, the slip tool. The slip tool is really handy if you just want to move your clip's start and end frames back or forward a couple of frames once it's already on the timeline. Hit Y to activate the slip tool, and then you can click and drag your clip and you'll see it's counting backwards seven frames and it's also now showing me where the clip will start and end up in the program window. Number seven, reappearing in source. Say you have a clip that you want to use multiple parts of, but you've moved along in your edit and it's buried somewhere in your very structured bin system, because I know that you definitely have a very structured bin system when you edit. You can find it again by clicking on the clip that you've used in your timeline and hitting F. That will bring it back into the source window and show you what part of it you've already used. Then you can go through and find a new in and out point and create a new version of it here. 
I'm gonna actually add something into this one because this function I use all the time. It isn't technically a keyboard shortcut. So let's make the video 16 keyboard shortcuts and one mouse click and we'll call it even. If you double click a clip that is on the timeline, you can edit the in and out point that you've used that way. Instead of having to drag and then delete and then realign it in your edit. I love that you can just drag your selection in the source window if you decide you've changed your mind. Number eight, the nudge tool. And now this one is gonna follow on exactly from what I just showed you because I need to realign this clip. So if I zoom in here, you will see, I wanna bring it back so that it's in alignment with this cut point. I can click on it. And then if you hold command or control on PC and use the arrow keys, you will be able to nudge it along one frame at a time. If you hold shift command and use the arrow keys, you'll be able to push it along five frames at a time. This is really useful when you have sound effects like this. And if you're struggling to line them up where you need to, you can just select it and then use the nudge tool to line it up exactly where it needs to go. Number nine, ripple delete. Now this is a tool that I literally use every single day. It's important to note though, that if you've got a finished project like I do here with heaps of layers, it'll only work if you lock the layers that have clips that are longer than the selection you're going to delete. So I've locked my music track, that's not going to be affected. I want to delete this clip without leaving a massive space. So I'm going to select it, hold down option or alt on a PC keyboard and hit delete. And that is going to bring all of the rest of my clips forward, which just eliminates me having to hit delete and then hit delete again. And it may not seem like a lot, but when you've done that 20 times in a row, when you're doing a rough cut of a video, that's a lot of clicks that you don't have to deal with. Another example might be in this rough cut here where it's just my piece to camera and I've repeated myself. So I wanna delete this clip here. I can go option, delete, and that's just going to bump my clips forward and make my rough cut go a lot quicker. Number 10, insert and overwrite. While it is easy enough to click and drag your clips onto the timeline, Two fun keyboard shortcuts are the comma and full stop keys, also known as the insert and overwrite functions. So if I put my playhead using my arrow keys up and down where I want my B-roll to be placed and an important tip for this one, you see this V1 is selected here and it says source patching for inserts and overwrites. That is the layer that your insert or overwrite is going to appear on. So if I hit full stop right now, it's gonna overwrite the footage I have on V1. I don't want that, so I'm going to enable V2, which is generally where I put my B-roll, hit full stop, and it's gonna go on the second layer there. If instead I were to insert using the comma, it is going to create a break and put my footage in that way. In this instance, this is not what we want. But if you had another piece to put in in between these two talking points, we could use our knowledge of the A tool and click and return to V and move our footage down and then insert our footage and then bring it back. But I think that's a bit too tedious for me. So instead of doing all of that, you can just put your playhead in between the two clips, hit comma and it will insert your clip and in turn, move everything else down the timeline. Number 11, selecting in and out. So at this stage of the game, some of these tools are gonna to start working in conjunction with one another, which is what I love about using keyboard shortcuts in Premiere Pro. So this next one, say I want to change this piece of B-roll here to a different clip. I will make sure that is selected and I will hit forward slash. That's gonna create this in and out point around it. I will make sure the layers that I don't want to be affected are turned off. Let's go over to my B-roll bin and I'll select a new clip. I'll find a new endpoint where I want this clip to start and I'm going to use the full stop override key and that is going to replace the clip on the timeline with the new one. Number 12, centering your timeline. 
The sister of the forward slash is the backslash. And this has got to be my favorite tool. It's a really random favorite tool to have. It's just really satisfying. So if I hit backslash on my keyboard, it is going to bring the entire timeline into view. If I hit it again, it's gonna go back to where I was zoomed into before. But instead of having to hit the minus key like 17 times, I can just hit backslash and it's going to bring my timeline fully into view. Am I weird for liking something like this so much? I don't know. Comment below if you also get just excited as I do about this really awesome tool. Number 13, quick audio adjustments. This one is actually kind of two tips in one as well. So the title of this video, that was a complete lie, but you're getting three bonus tips when I only lined you up for one. So win, 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 really. You can quickly adjust the audio level of a clip by selecting it and hitting G and that will bring up the audio gain panel. When I start editing my piece of cameras like this, I will go in and select normalize all peaks too and hit negative six because that is a very standard audio level across the board for video production. When I add music to my clips, I usually set them between negative 24 and negative 30 decibels. So I can go in, hit G, normalize all peaks to negative 24. If I then realize that this is still too loud or it's too quiet, with the audio layer still selected, I can use these square brackets left and right to lower and raise the audio level one decibel at a time. If you hold shift and use the left and right square brackets, you will lower and raise the level five decibels at a time. Number 14, the rolling edit tool. So this tool kind of allows you to edit two clips at once. So if we zoom into our timeline and hit N, that is going to activate the rolling edit tool. I can now come over here and I can adjust the start and end point of these two clips. So if I want more on the start of the second clip, I can bring it back that way. And if I want to extend the first clip, I'll bring it forward this way. In a more practical way, you can use this if you've got B-roll and you want to adjust it to go with the dialogue or where the music beats. So I've got N selected and I'm gonna click and drag to where there's kind of a dip in this dialogue here. Number 15, the ripple edit tool. If this tool sounds kind of familiar, just like the ripple delete tool, the ripple edit tool will allow you to trim a clip without leaving space on the timeline. So if we zoom in here and we hit B on the keyboard, that will activate our ripple edit tool. Then we're gonna come in nice and close actually, and we can click and drag this clip and it is going to ripple edit as we go. You can also go back the other direction and add clip back in and it is going to push all of your footage along the timeline. Number 16, Q and W. While we're on the subject of ripple editing, another set of tools that I love are the ripple trim tools, which are Q and W on the keyboard. If we jump back into our rough video here and I go back to the start, you can use Q and W to trim before the playhead as well as after the playhead. Q will delete everything in that clip that is before the playhead and W will do the reverse and delete everything in that clip that is after the playhead. This is one of those times where it only works if you have the layer selected as active. So if I turn off V1 and A1 and I press W now, nothing is going to happen. All right, we have made it through to the bonus tip. So this is actually not a keyboard shortcut that is standard in Premiere Pro, but something that I didn't like with the standard workflow is actually the razor tool and having to cut with the mouse because what you've probably gathered from watching this video so far is I would much rather just hit something on the keyboard than have to touch my mouse at all. So what I chose to do instead is go up to my keyboard shortcuts and you'll see the standard application for the Z key is the zoom tool. And I'll be honest with you, in my 10 years using Premiere Pro, I haven't touched that once. So I deleted that. I went to the search bar and searched for add edit. 
I dragged and dropped that onto my Z key, hit OK. And now when I go through my edit, instead of having to go and hit the razor tool or make a cut, I can drag my playhead to where I want the cut to be, hit Z, and it's gonna put a cut point in for me. Then I can use our old favorite ripple delete and continue on our way. When I'm going through my piece to cameras, I will use Z in conjunction with Q to go and really quickly take out all of the pauses. I'll go Z and I will go Q. And then when I'm doing refinements, I might use my arrow keys, do across a couple of frames, use W, go back across and hit Q and just take out more of the time at the start and ends of those clips. And I really can't say enough how this one little function helps me to speed up editing all of my videos. All right, we have made it through 16 and a half and a mouse click and a bonus tip and whatever, this part is not important. I really hope that all of these tips speed up your workflow in Premiere Pro. If you'd like to see more, check out these videos for more Premiere Pro tips and more of my editing workflows. Leave your questions in the comments below so I can answer them for you and let me know what you'd like to see a video about next. I'll see you next time.